Hello, this is Trace Finicaro, founder and lead developer of the QZ Tray desktop software. Today's video is intended for developers, not end users, and the point of this getting started guide is to show you how to download, install QZ Tray, and then set up your first sample for printing. In this sample, we're going to show you how to make an, your initial connection to the QZ Tray desktop software, how to locate printers for the QZ Tray desktop software, and then how to send a sample document to that printer. All right, let's get started. Step one, we're going to download and install QZ Tray. Note this version of QZ Tray 2.1.1 does require Java is pre-installed on the machine. We are fixing this in a future release and Java will come bundled with QZ, but it's not ready yet. If you're interested, you can track our bug report 468 on our GitHub page. If Java is not detected, QZ Tray will warn you and it'll bring you to the download page. Notice the version that QZ Tray recommends is OpenJDK 11, and we use the version from adoptopenjdk.net. Take the defaults when installing Adopt Open JDK. and then click OK to resume the QZ Tray installer. Now that QZ Tray is installed and running on your machine, you should see it down in the bottom corner as well as the version that is running. All right, next step is getting into some coding. So for this example, we'll be using a plain HTML page. Um, I feel that this is the best way to illustrate how to use QZ without any other technologies interfering. Step one will be to download the API. Um, this can be grabbed from the file system. It's installed on Windows and C program files QZ tray under the demo folder. Um, the API is installed on Mac under applications QZ tray.app in the demo folder. And on Linux, it's installed in OPT qz-tray in the demo folder. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll be grabbing the API, the JavaScript file, directly from our website. It's also available on NPM if you'd like to fetch it that way. Now that the API is downloaded, we're going to create a new file, um, an HTML file, and we're going to import the API. And we're going to make our first call, which makes the initial connection to QZ Tray, just to make sure that we have proper communication working. And that is the initial connection. You'll notice that it shows an untrusted website dialog. This is expected. Uh, this is going to occur unless the QZ Tray license has been installed. There are tutorials for installing those QZ um, Tray licenses. You can go to our channel. We have tutorials provided in various programming languages, including JavaScript. Um, you can go check those out if you want to get rid of these dialogs, but they're outside of the scope of this tutorial, so we're going to continue. 
Now that we've established our initial connection, our next step is going to be finding the printers on the machine. The syntax for doing this is qz.printers.find. However, we must have that initial connection first. The way that we chain this is using JavaScript promises. If you're more familiar with using the await syntax, you can use that and keep them on separate lines, but that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. By default, qz.printers.find will return all of the printers that are found on the machine. We can narrow that selection down by providing a printer name, but for the first step of just finding all of the printers attached, we're just going to call find and then we're going to show the results onto the screen. Now if we refresh our page, this is the initial connection. This is it asking to talk to the printers. And as you can see, all of the printers attached to the machine are now listed into the web page. Although searching for all printers can be very useful, you can loop over the printers and you can look for a specific string in the printer name. We have a functionality for this. If you provide a parameter to find, instead of returning an array with all of the printers on the machine, it will provide the best match for that name. Now that we have our printer name, we're going to create a configuration in order to prepare our first test print. Now that we know we've found our printer, the next step will be providing this printer name into a configuration so that we can actually print something. In our case, we're going to be using the HTML printing example from our 2.1 pixel guide. This is available at qz.io slash wiki. In fact, all of the data and information that you see today is available on our website and on our wiki. The first thing that I would like to point out is the configuration. In this case, our example just has printer name. However, in our case, we already know what the printer name is, and we're going to provide it as a parameter. The second step is modifying our data block. Our example shows that we will be providing the URL for a HTML file. However, we don't really want that. Instead, we're going to be using plain, so that way we can control the data directly from our code. And the plain data is simply just that. You can provide raw HTML to be printed. The final step is sending the configuration and the data to our printer. For that, we're going to be using qz.print. The first parameter is the configuration. The second parameter is the data. And there you have it, our first successful print using the QZ API. Next, we'll cover exception handling. What if the printer PDF creator somehow got removed since the last time that you loaded this page? How would you know to handle the exception when the printer can't be found? Well, fortunately, due to the luxury of JavaScript promises, all we need is a dot .catch. That dot .catch will throw all the way up the stack, which means if any calls 
all the way along that promise chain happen to throw an exception, it will be thrown up the stack. For example, right now, if I change the printer name to bogus, and I try reloading our page, the symptom that we get is really nothing. It doesn't really tell us what's happening. It doesn't tell us why it's not printing. And to an end user, this is very confusing. So what we're going to do instead is, is we're going to catch the exception. Now the first thing I would like to notice is, I would always recommend using the return keyword. Whenever you're calling a QZ API that returns a promise. Now, with JavaScript, this return is implicit, which means the last line executed will return the variable from that function call. However, to be explicit and to know that you're getting a promise each time, I would highly recommend using the return keyword, especially on the last line of your functions. Now that we're searching for a bogus printer name, we're going to do something with the exception that JavaScript throws. And as you can see, specified printer could not be found is what's returned by the QZ tray application. And now you can take action based on that message. So great. We have code that'll execute on page load, but what if a user wants to trigger this print action? Well, let's try using a button. Now, when somebody clicks the print button, it'll execute the code block. Don't forget to rename bogus back to your actual printer name before running this example. Now, we have printed directly from a print button allowing the user to trigger the print action. However, we've introduced a problem. If you try clicking print again, we fall back into that exception function. And this is because we try to persist the QZ connection for the duration of the web page. This is because opening a WebSocket connection on a web page can be a taxing operation. So we have two options here. One of them is to keep the connection persistent, whereas another option is to close the connection when we're done printing. First technique that we can use for handling a WebSocket connection that's already active is to persist that connection. To do this, we'll call qz.websocket connect on page load, and then our first call inside the print function will be the call to printers.find. The reason that this works is because there's generally a slight delay between the page loading and a person clicking on a button. Now you can see that the initial connection shows up with your allow dialog. However, you don't see the rest of the dialogs because we have to click print to invoke those. Now this works as expected, and then if you decide to click print a second time, it uses that persisted connection and printing works properly. However, like I said, this relies on a human actually waiting a split second for qz.websocket connect to finish. So how do we guard against that? Well, we have an API for that. It's called qz.websocket.isActive. And if that comes back as false, 
That means that the WebSocket hasn't finished connecting yet. It also could mean there was an abnormal WebSocket termination, such as the software being closed manually. So this is how you would guard against QZ.WebSocket Connect not finishing before somebody clicks that print button. Another technique to handling the WebSocket connection already being open when you try to print is to actually close out the WebSocket connection each time printing happens. This is a pretty popular solution as well. To do that, we're simply going to call QZ.WebSocket.Disconnect after printing has occurred. Now there's many ways to do this and because of different scenarios where the WebSocket succeeds to connect, printing fails, you may actually want to wrap your code in multiple try-catch blocks, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to simply use a dot finally block, and that's how we're going to close the connection. Now if you notice in this example, you don't get that initial connection dialog because we've removed the QZ.WebSocket connect from page load and it's back inside the print function. Printing succeeded, however the WebSocket connection was closed when it was done, so if I click print again, it'll open a brand new WebSocket connection and then go through the print routine again. Well, that does it for our Getting Started tutorial. I hope you found this useful. You can ask questions in the comments below. You may also go to qz.io slash support. We have a community mailing list. It's on Google Groups. You can also reach out to us directly if you're a premium subscriber. If you're not sure and you're pretty sure you want to buy it but you, you don't know yet, reach out to sales at qz.io and ask us for a free 30-day demo. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Take care.